Hi, and thank you for your interest. I'm sure you wonder how my photo animator works. So stay tuned, I will show you how these two images have been animated. Have fun! Okay, let's start with creating this loopable animation of this nice picture. The first thing we need to do is to import the picture into the photo animator project file. After we have done that, we can open the put source composition and drag it in here. We scale it until it fits the frame and we head over to the set mask composition. We click on the mask layer and mask the background of the picture. The photo animator will use this mask to create eight layers. The background will be layer number eight and the very foreground will be layer number one. We can see these eight layers by opening the animation composition and activate the visual help mode. To get the best results, we need to spread these eight layers evenly over the whole picture. Now we are already done setting up the scene. We can open the animation presets and create our first animation. A simple push-in. Of course, there are many settings for creating an animation. We can change the duration, at ease in and ease out, change the camera move, maybe a dolly left to right, and make it loopable. Like this. But for this example, I want to use the loop 1 animation. The camera pushes in and out and left to right, a nice circled animation. It looks like this. Now we can open the light composition and add some light rays and the light source. Click on the light controls layer and mask the area where the light rays should come from. Next we place the light source. In this case I want to match the direction of the original light rays from the picture, so the light source should sit somewhere like here. We also want to match the color of the original light rays, so it should be more orange, something like this. We can further adjust the light rays with the help of the levels. We can uh, increase the fall off so they are spread over the whole picture. And a very helpful feature is to pin the light source to the background layer and have the direction and position of the light rays calculated automatically. This is especially helpful to creating loopable animations like this. If we want to have a better look at what we are doing, we can hide the original picture and only look at the light rays and the light source. We can make further adjustments on the levels, can boost the int intensity. If we are happy with the result, we can look at the final composition. To get even more depth perception, I would add some particles to this animation. We can do this in the animation composition. We change the size, amount and color until we are satisfied and that's it. Okay, so in the next example I want to show you how to get from this picture to this animation. So this picture contains an object, we need to separate it from the background first. You can also mask it within the photo animator project, but since this is a still picture, the best way to do this is in Photoshop. After you have isolated the object, you also need to heal the background. Most of the time you get a great result with one click on the content aware fill, but you can do it with the stamp tool as well. So when you're done uh, isolating the object, you need to import the object and the background into the photo animated project. And like before, the background goes into the put source composition. You scale it and place it how you like it. Then you open the set mask composition and uh, mask the background. For this example, that would be something like this. And when you're done with it, you go to the animation composition, click on the controls layer, just like before, activate the visual help mode and spread the layers evenly over the picture. Okay, um, then we need to place the object, the lamp, on uh, the correct layer. In this case, this is layer number three. You just drag it in here. We scale it the same amount as the main picture was scaled. 
and place it right on the layer. Now the setup is already done and we could use the animation presets, but this time we want to animate the camera ourselves. So I set the, the workspace to 4 seconds and I start moving the camera into the picture. I create keyframes. So now it looks like this. So I want the camera to start high and end low. So um, we have these nice light ray effects. So what I'm doing is I create keyframes for the red and blue crosshair. With the red crosshair I can move mainly the foreground and with the blue crosshair I move mainly the background. You can see here that some artifacts might emerge, but with the magic layer connection they are erased again. But since the magic layer connection needs some computing power, I'd suggest to only activate it for rendering. Now I want to give more depth to the animation. I will use some smoke from the included objects. So just like we placed the lamp on layer number 3, I will now place one layer of smoke on layer number 1. And just place it that it looks nice. Something like this might work. Then there's layer number 3, but I want to place it on layer number 4. I add another layer of smoke. I want more smoke on the right side, so I uh, mirror this layer. Move it a bit, so I just get the effect I want. Let's have a look. Okay, we got a lot of smoke, very thick and white. But since this is a very warm picture and it is warm light, the smoke should have a different color. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tint uh, these smoke layers orange I, and I will copy this effect and put it on the another on the other smoke layer as well. I will also reduce the opacity of the two layers so it's not as thick as it was before. So have a look again and yeah I like this. I think that works pretty well. Okay let's go to the light composition. Like before, I'm going to select this layer and draw a mask around the area which the light rays should emerge from. Something like this. Since in this example uh, the light moves, the lamp moves, so I also need to animate the mask path. So I set keyframes for the mask path and uh, now the area is always on the lamp. So the next thing we do is to put the point of the light source. Uh, we also create keyframes for this. First I want it to start here and at the end of the animation I want it to be right here. So the camera moves down so it will come into vision and give these light, nice light rays. We are also going to change the light to orange to match the picture and we can have a closer look on the light rays and the light source to see if everything is exactly as we want it. I think this looks pretty nice. Let's have a look at everything together. I think this is a pretty nice animation. I hope you enjoyed watching these mini tutorials and if you have any questions please feel free to contact me through my profile page. Okay, thank you for watching and have a great day. Bye bye!